on here. So let's get started. Um, we'll start off with Jesse Cohen. Hey, John, uh, I'm just wondering if you could talk a bit about the progression of Quentin Byfield's game uh, over the games you've uh, been coaching him this year. Yeah, yeah, the uh, I just I think the confidence level has uh, has skyrocketed uh, at this point. I mean, that was that was his uh, best best game transporting the puck uh, through the neutral zone, I felt. And he's he's been building up to that game. So it's not like he's been deficient in that in that department. And so I think that's kind of the um you know the telltale sign of that of what what he was drafted for is to is to be able to carry that thing uh you know 180 feet support and make plays off of it and uh you know I think uh, when we first first started off with QB there was a guy that he he was finding his routes at the pro game he was finding his timing uh the detail things like uh you know, a little bit heavier in, in battles uh, one hand on the stick in battles as opposed to when he needed two all these things still need work and he's going to, he's going to have to keep figuring them out. But the, uh, the, the learning curve has gone from, you know, a guy that has struggled to point his plus minus was down there at probably the worst in the league. If uh, down, down right at the bottom. And that, now he's just, I mean, I don't know what it looks like from the, from your vantage, but it's to, to me, it's a dominant player uh, at this point. I, I loved, I loved his game today and I, I've liked it for, for a while now. And, uh, I, I thought he was, he was outstanding. I, and you know what, he still needs to work on some things too. Like you get, he gets into the scoring zones and it's, it, you know, it's, we talked to him a lot about his needing assassins, uh, mentality, uh, in the scoring zones. And, you know, last night he passed up two, two on one opportunities and, uh, he probably, I thought he should have driven it, driven both of them or, or tried to try to pipe it himself. So we're still, still working through a couple things there, but a uh, tremendous young man and, uh, couldn't be, couldn't be happier for him. And I think, uh, Craig Johnson deserves a lot of credit too. With uh, you know, Quinn's put in the work, but there's been a lot, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, a lot of uh, detail and work and in video sessions, uh, helping helping QB out with uh, with his game. Another high profile prospect you've got is Alex Turcott. He scored a nice goal tonight, um, third on the season. I'm curious what ways he positively impacts the team if he's not scoring goals. Yeah, it's you know another player that that's still fine in his way here and. Uh, with, with Alex, it's out, it, it, when he's playing his best, he's got the other team on their heels all the time and making little carving slashing type of plays. Um, and he was, he was around it again this weekend. It just, it didn't click for him on the line rush. Uh, like I think he would like, um, there was a, there was a, a tip play or a, a shot today that hit the post to turn wheel and fired back to the far post, which is something we worked on in practice, uh, quite a bit. Uh, this week and and also he drove he drove play with a lot of a lot of, of routes and um you know with that he's he's still gotta gotta learn through a couple things you know the, there's a, a couple plays where he he had the puck on his stick and, and then it's uh it's in our net and so there's some there's some good learning learning lessons too and sometimes it takes uh it takes a tangible result on the a, a negative tangible result for to, for the learning to uh to take place and uh, unfortunately for Alex he didn't make a lot of mistakes tonight but the, t the couple that he, he made did did end up in our net so we're just we'll have a quick chat with him about it and um you know the, and, you know that's kind of about uh controlling the gray matter of a game at all times making sure that we're driving pace and and uh continuing uh, the, uh, the proper mindset and both uh mentally uh, as a as a team and as individuals thanks John but thanks Jesse and we'll go to John Hope now Hey, John, uh, just curious what you were able to work on during this down week, you know, the off week, obviously a lot of work put in on the power play and some other areas, but what were you able to work on that you were able to then see translate into these games over the weekend? Yeah, I mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier about the, 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 uh, the work that Craig Johnson put in with, with uh, QB and some of his detail things to get him acclimated to the pro game. And uh, CJ did a, a, you know, just a, a bang up job with, uh, with the power play this, this week, it was, uh, in a point of emphasis and, and one that, uh, that we beat down and had some strong conversations with the power play, both as groups and as individuals that they needed to be better and needed to value their position more on the team. And not that they uh, were taking it for granted, but maybe, maybe some choice words were, were used in that, uh, in that direction as well, that, you know, what, um, you got is you guys got to earn it out there. And so I, it was, that was a, a prime, prime example of something we worked on this week. And uh, I'll, I, I'm not going to divulge anything else because, but if you're, 
the closer you were watching, um, you could probably put two and two together with we were outstanding in one department and started to look like we knew what we were doing um, in attack modes. So we'll just leave it at that. I, I can't, I'm not going to uh, tell you anymore. Fair enough. Uh, and as of right now, tonight, Arthur Kaliev leading the team in goals, leading the team in points. If I would have told you that was going to be the case uh, coming out of training camp, what would your thoughts be then versus maybe what your thoughts are now? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised in the goals department. Uh, I, you know, my thoughts on already. I, I would say that I wish already had maybe a time and a half more of those goals, maybe, you know, 15 or instead of nine, I think is what he's got. Is that correct? Something yeah. along that line, those lines, I think, uh, you know, but already uh, has, has bought in completely on the idea of being a 200 foot player. And he's, he's one of our more reliable players um, in the, in our defensive system. He's still got some things to work on in our neutral zone defense. And that's a fine art. I think it, it, not many players have played in a one, three, one before. So mm -hmm. it's, it, some guys pick it up right away. And I think a lot of other guys uh, struggle with it. And so, uh, but that's, that's, that's part of being youth. It's angling. It's just a different method of checking. Right. So uh, it's, uh, it's something that already has got to continue to work at, but uh, hats off to him for, for his dedication. And even when pucks weren't going in for him, uh, he was frustrated with that. He didn't, he didn't change his game. He didn't revert back to, to junior habits. He just kept pushing for the, and, he, and his faith in the system and the faith in the, in the work in the work ethic that he was putting in has been has been uh, commendable. Jacob Mavari, uh, you know, now that he's back from the injury and sort of been able to put that behind him, what have you liked about his game the most here, say, over the last uh, five or eight games? It, just his composure, I, I think, is the number one thing. And it translates to all different kinds of offensive opportunities and, and plays getting made. And there, there's no shortage of them. It's not like he's just a uh, – a one trick pony in the, in the uh, offensive zone, or, you know, he's good on the breakout and uses the middle options or something like that. He's, he's just very consistent and you, you, you can hardly count on, on a hand, how many times he's actually been beaten one-on-one, um, -on -one, whether it be at the net front or, or defensively. So, you know, for him, it's, it's about rounding out athleticism is he, you know, his, his skating is always going to be a question for him and whether or not he can do it at the, at the highest level. But right now, He's a pretty damn good American league defenseman and um, a guy that's, that's given us solid touches on the power play. I'm not sure that's ever going to be his calling card. And you might even see a better, a better five on five and penalty kill player. If that, if that comes off of his plate, you know, and he's doing a good job for us, but I, I think that um, long-term it, it would probably be a better developmental route for him to, to have that off of his plate. And then one more, John, if you don't mind, I'm sorry, but uh, well, I'm well, curious how, how much, but you use the, the carrot of a call-up in the sense that, you know, if we see Byfield called up here in the next 24 hours, two more call-ups available, and you literally can make the argument for probably five, six guys from, you know, Turk to Kapari to Fagamo to a number of different guys. How do you use that sort of as a carrot to motivate guys, or is it just something that you uh, don't even really get involved in a conversation with at all? Yeah, that's not, that's not my department. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. Uh, I would, you know, I think that that's something that the players, um, can probably read through and, uh, the, you know, they were, they were selected for a reason. That's to, that's to one day play for the Kings. And, um, it, we're, we're just trying to give them the best avenues to be better tomorrow, uh, to be, to be honest with you. So that's, uh, that's our job. And it's, you know, they, they need to, they need to make sure that they're, I, I love that the guys dream, uh, about playing in the show. That's, that's obviously why everybody straps them on and the, from day one and, and dreams of, of that. And, uh, it's uh, it's up to us to keep them level and up, up to us to, to push and make them try to make them better and more more uh, as ready as possible for, for the Kings one day. Appreciate it. Thank you. you bet. And last one's here from Patrick Williams. Uh, you know, getting back to just the topic of a player, if skating is an issue, is that is that an issue that can be overcome and he still has an NHL potential or these days, is that almost a fatal uh, flaw in a player's game? I, you know what? It's interesting. If you if you if you downright don't have straight ahead speed, I, I think you're you're in you're in big trouble as a forward. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll not, I'll never say that this game has you know, that there's certain things that you have to have or don't have. There, I think one of the beautiful things about hockey is that you've got you you have players that are that are gamers, guys that. Um, 
you know, game seven, um, Williams, for instance, you know, guys that just have a knack and, and know the spots and, um, just so smart. I, I think, uh, you know, a guy like, guy like Toffoli was, I don't think ever coined to be a, a burner, but his, his, you know, his prowess, anticipation, great stick, um, it, it, wall play uh, those are those are things that if you're if you're excellent in one department uh if you're if you're the best in the world or in the in the, t- in the top one percent of one percent in the world it's something uh you can you can find a way to make it happen and that's that's our that's what we're trying to do is take the guys you know their, their best characteristics and try to try to bolster them as much as we possibly can and then and then a degree at a time try to take up the things that they're not great at so you know, it, with a guy that doesn't skate well I'll you know, you'll work with him on anticipation. That's, that's my, my thought process there. And that is your, your method of um, managing young prospects in the sense that, you know, you're trying to accentuate their positives rather than, than necessarily just completely focusing on, on the short shortfalls in their game. hundred percent. You got to you, you have to take what they're best at and find out what that is real fast. Uh, what you know, hopefully project what they might be at the NHL level try to hone in on some, a couple things that they do really, really well, uh, bolster those as much as you possibly can. Um, and then, and then just chip away at the things that they're, that they're not good at. And, and usually it's just, it's one department at one, one thing at a time. Like you're not going to be able to fix a player all uh, overnight. So you'll start with a forward. Hey, this is your, this is where you're at. You need to be here on your funnels in the defensive zone. This is your responsibility in the defensive zone. Um, next. And, you know, then it's your anticipation on your exits. Uh, then you're say it's a guy like Artie, and then you're you're just working on his scoring chances. Where does he get his scoring chances from? And give him as many shots in those areas, and because that's what he's supposed to be as a scorer. So it's a good good example to come back to Artie on that one. Great, thank you. You bet. All right, thank you, everybody. That's it for today. All right, see you guys.